<laughs> Does Stormy need to come say hi to Nicole? Oh. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to have whining the whole way through the service. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye bye, wise Stormy. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Family and friends. We are gathered here in the presence of God to celebrate the union of Nicole Joy Tigner and Brennan Donahue Venturi, to witness the vows they make to one another, to pledge our support and encouragement, and to seek God's blessing upon their marriage. God created us for companionship and gave us this, a capacity for joy. Jesus showed us self-giving love and taught us to continually forgive. And the Holy Spirit given in our baptism renews grace within us day by day and enables us to grow in faith, in hope, and in love. Marriage is a gift and a calling in which two people become for one another a source of love, a font of blessing, and a deep well of grace, bearing each other's burdens and sharing each other's joys. As Brennan and Nicole commit their lives to one another, families are joined, friendships are forged and strengthened, and a new community of love is formed. As we bear witness to the vows made today, let us surround Nicole and Brennan with affection and prayer, giving thanks for all of the ways God's love is made manifest in our lives. Let us pray. God, you are always faithful in your love for us. Look with mercy upon Brennan and Nicole who have come seeking your blessing. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon them so that with steadfast love they may honor the promises they make this day through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Brennan, I have a question for you. Brennan, will you take Nicole to be your wife? And will you be faithful to her, love her, honor and cherish her? Will you live with her according to the commandments of God in a holy union? Will you? I will. Nicole, will you take Brennan to be your husband? And will you be faithful to him, love him, honor and cherish him? Will you live with him according to the commandments of God in a holy union? Will you? I will. Got a question for Maggie and William and Rick and Carla. So I'm going to stick over here so I can look at you. As Brennan's parents, will you do everything in your power to uphold Brennan and Nicole in their life together? If so, please answer, we will. We will. All right. Diana and Terry, will you do, as Nicole's parents, will you do everything in your power to uphold Nicole and Brennan in their life together? If so, please answer, we will. Okay. Will the rest of you gathered, family and friends, do everything in your power to uphold Nicole and Brennan in this life together? If so, please answer, we will. We will. That's right. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> so, Nicole and Brennan, I want you to just take, <laughs> take a moment and look out here. These people represent the many that can't even be here today who are here for you, who will pray for you, who will love you, who will sometimes correct you, um, but always be there for you. Thank you all for being here for Nicole and Brennan on this day. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> no, she, she wants me to stay. <laughs> okay, let's hear some words from scripture. From 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic power and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. 
Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. Now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, but then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is love. So you all have picked a good passage to begin your life together. I know you struggled with it a little bit because it felt a little cliche and overdone, uh, but there's a reason for that. It's super common in weddings because it's really important and it's really true. Um, as many times as we hear these words, we can never fully embody their message. It is beautiful, it's poetic, and it's hard. For in this passage, Paul seeks to define love, describing what it actually looks like when it's lived out. This is not the kind of love we see in Hallmark movies. This is not a thrill a minute, lose your appetite kind of love. This is love in action. It's about doing more than feeling. It's about things like kindness and patience and self-control. It is adulting on steroids. I think Paul sums up this when he identifies four hallmarks of love in this passage. He first of all says that love bears all things. No one is perfect. Love acknowledges that reality. There will be things about you that you wish were not the case. Things that will rub you wrong, even hurt you at times. Beds will be left unmade. Money will be spent extravagantly. <laughs> <laughs> Maintaining sobriety will be a day-to-day -day struggle and may not always run as smoothly as you wish or be as pretty. Love means bearing with these things for the sake of the other and for the sake of your union. Secondly, love believes all things. More than bearing with each other, you need to believe in each other. Today you are giving each other a precious gift to be cherished and guarded, the gift of each other's trust. So before I went to seminary and into ministry, I worked for a foreign currency exchange company in Southern California. And we bought and sold 120 different kinds of foreign currencies. We bought and sold gold coins. And in our LA office, there was a vault that was the central processing for all of this. And there was a guy named Tim who sat in that vault all day and just received shipments of currency from all over the world. And it made him a little punchy. And one day, a shipment arrived just as somebody else was in the vault with him. And jokingly, he took the package and he went, I just can't take this anymore. And he tossed it over his shoulder. Everybody had a good laugh and he forgot about it. Later that week, during the weekly inventory, they discovered that $10,000 of English pounds and $10,000 of German marks were missing. Because when he tossed it, it hit the wall, banked off the wall into the trash can, and it had gotten thrown away. The lesson I take from Tim <laughs> that I would like to offer to you is that this is something really precious. But it's not going to feel as precious every day as it does today. It's really important that you remember what you guys are giving each other, how precious it is, how much has been entrusted to, leave, to believe in each other and live a life worthy of that belief. Thirdly, love hopes all things. Take time to dream together. You two are two individuals with your own hopes, ambitions, and possibilities, and it's easy to follow those commitments and drift away from each other. 
Commonly held dreams help you to hold a future where you both have a place and will allow you to move together in a shared direction. And finally, love endures all things. I wish I could stand here today and tell you that every day of your life is going to be as perfect as today has been so far. Um, you'd know I was lying. Uh, you both have had enough experience of the other to know that there are days that are just unbearably hard. Um, but I think that you gleaned an important lesson to hold on to in your pre-marriage class that you shared with me. That there is a real difference between expectations and desires. Um, between what you would like to be true of your relationship and what you need to be true of your relationship. Learning to put up with what you would like but isn't is simply a matter of endurance. But when it comes to the essentials, the counsel to respond to unmet needs with grace and to receive met needs with gratitude is pure wisdom. Hard or tragic times can do one of two things to your relationship. It can pull you apart or it can draw you closer together. Let it draw you closer to one another and to God to find the strength you need. So, love one another with a love that bears, believes, hopes, and endures. If you do that, you will know a love that will not only grow stronger as the years go by, but will bless your life each day. So love one another. Be each other's friend, lover, and partner. And may you know faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these being love. So I invite you now, having heard these words about love and, and expressed your intention to join your lives, to express your love and commitment to one another. And so I actually will let you decide. Is Brennan, are you going to go first? Or do you want? Okay, that's what was our plan, but I thought I'd just double check. <laughs> thought I'd double check with you. Nicole. I feel truly blessed as I stand alongside you today. Thank you for inspiring me, being patient with me, supporting me, and most of all, loving me unconditionally. I adore you. Growing both together and separately over these last four years has been the highlight of my life. You inspire me to be the best version of myself and to continue following my dreams. Because we both believe that we wouldn't be here without God, it's my hope that our spiritual life will continue to deepen as we begin a new chapter today. By keeping God directly in the middle of our relationship, by bringing God into our new family, I trust we will continue to be blessed. I love you. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, my dearest husband. Oh. Almost. Almost. My dearest, <laughs> my dearest almost husband, <laughs> when, when I look into your eyes, I see our future children, years of joy and struggles, where we come out on the other side stronger, my gratitude for God, wrinkles, gray hairs, nursing each other back to health and ebbs and flows of growth, challenge, and hope. You are so easy to love. It is such a privilege and honor to hold your heart. I am continually amazed by your patience with me and the way you have taken care of me always. I adore and enjoy your sense of humor and our deepest laughs before bed. Watching the way you love our stormy girl. <laughs> 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 
Watching the way you love our Stormy Girl moves me and solidifies my knowing that you will be a devoted, kind, present, tender, clever, and fun father. <sighs> I am so grateful for my new family that has taken me in with love, acceptance, and open arms and for the way you love and serve my family. I vow to help you not lose sight of who you are. I vow to honor your goals and aspirations, knowing that they're no less than mine. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your dreams will be my own. And your God will be my God. so grateful I have found you. I will always choose you for the rest of the days we have together. I love you. <laughs> okay. So, having expressed your love, I invite you now to join hands and with your promises bind yourself together as husband and wife. Brennan, please repeat after me. Nicole, you are my beloved. Nicole, you are my beloved. And I promise before God and these witnesses. And I promise before God and these witnesses. That I will share my life with you. That I will share my life with you. In all love and honor in all love and honor, in all faith and tenderness, in all faith and tenderness, through joy and sorrow, through joy and sorrow, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live, as long as we both shall live. Nicole, you repeat after me. Brennan, you are my beloved. <coughs> <laughs> Brennan, you are my beloved. <laughs> and I promise before God and these witnesses, and I promise before God and these witnesses that I will share my life with you. That I will share my life with you. In all love and honor. In all love and honor. In all faith and tenderness. In all faith and tenderness. Through joy and sorrow. Through joy and sorrow. In sickness and in health. In, sick <laughs> in sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. <laughs> No, 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 The wedding ring is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, signifying to all the uniting of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Repeat after me. Nicole, I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign of my love and faithfulness as a sign of my love and faithfulness and with all that I am and with all that I am and all that I have and all that I have I honor you in the name of God I honor you in the name of God Hey, hey good job nice. Nice. <laughs> All right Nicole, you want to friends ring Okay Brennan, I give you this ring. Brennan, I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you in the name of God. I honor you in the name of God. You did not come to this day alone. You come from families who brought you to this day where you create a new family. So as you make this transition, I would invite you to take a moment to express your love and gratitude to your parents who loved you into this new commitment.
invite you to join me now in prayer. And at the end of the prayer, we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Um, all are invited to join in that as they wish. And just as Brennan and Nicole come from two families with their own traditions to create a new family today, we gathered here today come from many traditions of faith, but even many traditions within the Christian faith. And so I invite you when we come to that point to please pray the Lord's Prayer in whatever tradition is most comfortable for you. Eternal God, without your grace, no promise is sure. Strengthen Nicole and Brennan with patience, kindness, gentleness, and all other gifts of your spirit so that they may fulfill the vows they have made this day. Teach them that marriage is more than living for each other, that it is two uniting and joining hands to serve you in life. May they not expect of each other that perfection which belongs alone to you. May they minimize each other's weaknesses, be quick to praise and magnify each other's strengths, and always see each other through a lover's kind and patient eyes. Give them enough tears to keep them tender, enough hurt to keep them human, enough failure to keep their hands clenched tightly in yours, and enough success to make them sure that they walk with God. May they never take each other for granted, but always experience the breathless wonder that exclaims, out of all this world, you have chosen me. And when life is finished, may they be found then as now, still hand in hand, thanking you for each other. Help us all, O oh God, to do your will in each of our homes and lives. Enrich us with your grace and transform us by your spirit, that your peace, love, and justice may fill the earth. We pray these things through the name of Jesus Christ who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the presence of God and before this gathering, Brennan and Nicole have given their consent and made their solemn vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands, by the giving and receiving of rings. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no one separate. You two may kiss. All right. Okay. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And may the grace of Christ be with you, the love of God surround you and the Holy Spirit keep you and keep all of us, that we may all live life in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. It is now my great honor to present to you Brennan and Nicole Tigner, husband and wife. <laughs>
Ivory White. When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid Oh, I won't be afraid Where do we go? What do we do? Just as long as you stand Stand by me 